If you're using the Adobe Creative Cloud software, you are literally wasting your money. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to save $660 a year. Let's get into it. If you do any kind of digital media creation, then there is no question that Adobe's Creative Suite is the industry standard. It comes with a price though, because unlike other types of software products, Adobe's Creative Cloud is an ongoing subscription that you will never finish paying off. This barrier for entry might even hold you back from upgrading your workflow. You don't need to let that stop you any longer though, because today we're gonna to be talking about the best alternatives to Creative Cloud. And because this channel is about building a presence online and more specifically on YouTube, we're gonna be focusing on the only apps that you'll likely use in your content creation. I've been using Adobe's Creative Cloud since 2018, but as of yesterday, I have completely canceled my subscription and I am no longer shackled to the monthly payments. Let me show you how I did it. So first up is Photoshop, and that is Adobe's flagship product. And it has become so large that it has even become the generic term for what it does. Like what Band-Aid and Kleenex are to bandages and tissue paper, Photoshop is to photo editing software. At its core, Photoshop is an enhanced photo manipulation tool that allows you to edit photos in any way imaginable. And for us content creators on YouTube, it is the ideal thumbnail creating and editing tool, allowing us to take simple photos like this and turn it into a clickable thumbnail like this. While Photoshop is the gold standard, the cost alone far outweighs its benefits, especially if you're only using it to make thumbnails for YouTube. Let's say you only use Photoshop for thumbnail creation and you only upload once a week at $9.99 a month and including Lightroom, these two apps alone would cost you $120 a year for just 52 thumbnails or $2.30 per thumbnail, which in my book is extremely too high, especially if you're not yet monetized. My favorite alternative to Photoshop and the one that I'm currently using for my thumbnails is called Affinity Photo. At its core, Affinity Photo is essentially Photoshop light with less features. And in my three years of using Affinity Photo, I have yet to come across a feature that didn't exist that I needed. And the best part about Affinity Photo, aside from it essentially being a very good clone of Photoshop, is that it's only $50. No subscriptions, no annual plans, you pay 50 bucks once and it's yours forever. Oh, and I'm gonna be tiling up the cost for my alternatives to Creative Cloud to show you how much money you can save in the long run. So right now we're at 50 bucks. Next up is Lightroom, which is an application for organizing photos and allows you to make some common edits to mass amounts of photos like color changes, changing the white balance, the contrast, the exposure. Lightroom is more geared towards working with batches of photos like from a photo shoot and allows you to apply those changes whether they be color correcting LUTs or adjusting the white balances in large batches of photos. My favorite alternative app to Adobe's Lightroom is Luminar 4. And for my purposes, it does everything it needs to out of a photo enhancing tool. And like Affinity Photo, it's a one-time purchase. So no monthly subscriptions will be found here. Now, admittedly, I don't use Lightroom all that often, but it's nice to know that I have it in my back pocket in the form of Luminar 4 for the low price of $45. Adobe Illustrator is a tool for creating scalable vector graphics and digital creation so that they don't become blurry the larger they get. Now I use it to create things like logo icons or creating interesting clip art, like this guitar and amplifier that I use on one of my other YouTube channels. The best alternative to Illustrator in my opinion would be Affinity Designer. Designer has everything necessary for vector design and only falls short to Illustrator in only a few areas, at least in my own personal needs and uses. Like Affinity Photo, Designer will only set you back $50 for a one-time purchase, bringing our total so far to 145 bucks. After Effects is used for motion graphics and post-production as it allows you to create animated intros, lower thirds, and other graphic effects like this cool little subscribe button here. Now, I don't do a whole lot of creating with After Effects, and traditionally, I would just use it to edit templates that I either bought or downloaded from a subscription store like Storyblocks. And even then, you would still need something to edit the template. Now, I thought I was gonna be stuck using After Effects until I recently found out that many of the stock footage sites like Storyblocks also have what's called a motion template. And for those of you who don't know, motion is essentially After Effects, but for Mac, 
and it integrates seamlessly with things like Final Cut Pro. Now, it's not nearly as intensive as After Effects, but for us YouTubers who aren't special effects channels, it should be more than enough for some social media pop-ups and the occasional graphics. At 50 bucks for a one-time purchase, you'll be hard-pressed to find something this capable at this price range. Audition is likely one of those applications in the Creative Cloud suite that you probably don't focus too much attention on. Unless you're a musician like myself, or you're very picky about your audio and your videos, you probably haven't played around with it a whole bunch. But Audition is a powerhouse for audio, and its one feature, the Capture Tone Print feature, is an absolute game changer when it comes to noisy audio clips. Now, there is something to be said about getting the audio right at the source instead of fixing it in post, but it's nice to have this tool in your back pocket for those once in a lifetime moments that you can't go back to recreate. Audition has a bunch of other use cases as well, but for creating YouTube content, it really only comes down to remixes and eliminating background noises. For my purposes, I use Logic Pro X, which is completely overkill for YouTube videos, but since I also produce and record my own music at home, I already had the software, so I'll use it for the occasional video here and there. Now, Logic is expensive, coming in at $299, which brings our total to $495. But like everything else on this list, it's a one-time purchase. And it's also native to Mac, so it works seamlessly with Mac OS. Now, one thing I do want to mention right now is how much faster these alternative programs run on my Mac. A complaint that I've always had with working with Adobe is how much slower their programs seem to run on my computer. Apparently, Creative Cloud is more suited to speed on PCs. And the first thing that I noticed when switching away from Premiere Pro was the lack of lagginess while I was editing, which I think is one of the main selling points for moving away from Creative Cloud in my case. Lastly, we have Premiere Pro, which is a fully featured video editing machine packed with all the bells and whistles that you could possibly ever need for editing video. Now, I've been using Premiere Pro since I first started editing YouTube videos in 2018, and it's likely one of those early Peter McKinnon tutorial videos that was probably the starting point of when I first became a Creative Cloud subscriber. But over time, I heard of alternatives like the Mac designated Final Cut Pro and the dramatically underpriced DaVinci Resolve coming in at free 99. Both Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve hold their own when it comes to video editing software. Now, like Logic, these aren't cheap by any means but the one-time price is well worth the cost of admission. DaVinci Resolve Studio comes in at just shy of $300, though it does have a free version that can do basically what 99% of you guys watching this video will need from editing YouTube videos. And Final Cut Pro, which is the Mac equivalent of Premiere Pro, comes in at $300 as well. Going with either the Studio version of DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro will bring our total to just shy of $800 at $794. And I can already hear you guys typing away, I thought this video was supposed to save me money, not make me spend even more money. And that's where I want to challenge you to look at the long term here. Is YouTube something that you're going to be doing over the long haul, or are you just trying it out and seeing if it's for you? Like I mentioned at the start of this video, I've been subscribed to Creative Cloud since 2018. Almost four years of paying for that subscription. And at 600 bucks a year, I have spent around $2,500 on the software alone. And yes, there's a student discount, and if you know how to reduce the price every year before your trial ends up, you can save yourself some coin, but even that's still around 430 bucks a year. If you're gonna be in this game for the long haul, consider finding apps that don't require you to pay a monthly subscription that keeps you on a pay-to-use ecosystem. Had I bit the bullet and purchased all the apps that I talked about today at the beginning, I would have saved myself about $1,846, or in the case of cameras, either a nice new camera body or a nice new lens. And even if I didn't want to buy that all up front, you can get away with a free version of DaVinci Resolve and a $50 Affinity Photo for thumbnails and work your way up to the other software as you need them. At the end of the day, it all comes down to your use case scenario. And if you want to learn how to edit faster so you can spend more time creating and less time spending in front of your computer and editing, you'll want to watch this video right here. But before you do that, let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite alternative app for the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite? And did I miss any crucial content creating app that can also use a alternative plug? If so, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you over in the next video.